God is love, and in his love there is mercy, there is forgiveness. As we saw in our Sunday School lesson last week, with the parable of the merciless, the parable of the unforgiven servant, where we saw the love of God on display. God is love, and in his love he has loved both you and me. You and I, we should not take the unmerited love, that is, the grace of God. We should not take it for granted, as we will see here in our Sunday School lesson this week. lesson this week, it opens with Jesus sharing a parable. He tells us that the kingdom of heaven, there in the first verse, that it is like a landowner that went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. There in the second verse, you will see that the landowner and the laborers agreed that they would receive a denarius for the day of their labor in his vineyard. Now, pay close attention to this second verse here. As I often do when it comes to the parables that Jesus teach, we have to take a look at who is being represented in our parable. We have to take a look at what is being represented in our parable. So let's first take a look at who is being represented in our parable today. We have the landowner and then we have the hired laborers that are going into the vineyard to work for the landowner. So who is the landowner? Who does the landowner represent? The landowner represents, if you said the Lord, then you have guessed right. The landowner is a representative of God. Who are the higher laborers that have gone into the vineyard of the landowner? Again, I want you to be very specific. If you say us, then I want you to be specific as to who is the us. Because the landowner, if you pay attention to the parable, he has invited the hired laborers to come and to work for him. So those who are being represented here by the hired laborers, we should understand are all of those that have accepted the invite from the Lord. Who are all of those that have accepted the invite from the Lord? All of those that have accepted God's invite are true believers. As we'll continue on here in our lesson today, we'll see here in the next verse, the landowner, we're told, went back out to the marketplace to hire more laborers for the vineyard. And he saw that there were others there to hire. We're told here in the fourth verse, that the lawn owner said to those that were in the marketplace, you also go into the vineyard. And whatever is right, he says there, I will give you. Pay close attention there, he says, whatever is right. And so those that agreed, they went into the vineyard to work for the landowner. So from those two verses, we have more being represented here, more than meets the eyes. We can now take a look at what is being represented here from those two verses. Again, we see the vineyard and we see a marketplace as well, where again, the landowner has gone and he's hired the laborers from that market's place. So what does the vineyard represent? What does the marketplace represent? The vineyard, I want you to understand today, is representative of the kingdom of heaven. The marketplace, I don't know if you caught this, but the marketplace is representative of the world. And so we see here what is being represented from the parable thus far is God, again, going to the marketplace, that is the world, and he's inviting the world to come and follow him, to follow him to his vineyard, which again is representative of the kingdom of heaven. Those that accept the invite, again, are the true believers and they go and they labor for the Lord. We follow the Lord. So if you think about this for a moment, the child of God is moving in faith. We have been tasked, we have been commissioned to go out into the world and to share the good news. That is us laboring in the vineyard. So we see that being represented here in our parable so far. So let's continue on taking a look at the next few verses here. From the fifth through the seventh verse, we'll see that the landowner, that he continued to go back to the marketplace to hire more laborers. And we're told there that this happened around the sixth, the ninth, and the eleventh hour. Essentially, the landowner had been hiring laborers from about 9 a.m. to about 4 to 5 p.m. Those that were last hired, 
they were essentially hired during the last hour of work. Again, let us keep in mind what is being represented here in the parable so far. God, again, he is calling on people. And what we see here is that the Lord has been going to the marketplace. He's been going to the world repeatedly over and over and over again from Old Testament times to the time period in which we are living in now, which scripture would say are the latter times we live in the church age. God, again, has been inviting people to follow him. And he's been doing that for a very long time as again has been shown here now let us take a look here as we continue on in scripture here at what happened at the end of the work day if you will we'll see here in eight verse that the landowner said to his steward to call the laborers and to give them their wages notice this he said beginning from last to first now, how would you feel if you were one of the ones that had been working in the vineyard from the first, you know, from 9 a.m.? How would you feel had you been working in the vineyard from the start and then all of those that came in at the end was about to be paid before you? I want you to be honest. I want you to keep it real with yourself when you give that answer. Don't you lie. Keep it real with yourself. Now, let's see what happened next here. When the laborers came, those that were hired in the last hour, we are told there in the ninth verse that they received a denarius. Look at that, they received a denarius. Now, if you remember what was said there in the second verse, you remember that those that were first hired early in the morning, that they agreed to receive the denarius for the payment for their work for that day. So again, I ask you, how would you feel if you were one of the ones that had been laboring in the vineyard from the start, from the beginning at 9 a.m. And not only do you see the ones who showed up at the end of the work day, not only do you see them receiving a payment, but they're receiving the payment that you agreed to. Again, you be honest with yourself, you keep it real with yourself. Now let's keep on going here. We see that those that began working early in the morning, they felt that they should receive more. This makes sense, right? Because again, if you were one of the ones who had been there from the start, you probably would be in their shoes as well. You'd probably be making the same complaint to the landowner. You were there in the beginning and you would think, hey, if they are getting what I said that I had agreed to with you and getting that one denarius, I think I should be getting more. And the reason why I think that way is because, hey, I've been in this field, I've been in this vineyard for far longer than they have been in this vineyard. Yeah, we'll see there in the 10th verse that they only received a denarius. The one denarius that they had agreed to. We're then told in the 11th verse that they then complained. They complained to the landowner. What do you think that they complained about? Well, obviously, they complained that the folks who showed up last, that they had received the same amount of pay that they had received, even though they had been working from early in the morning until the final hour. So I ask you, do you think that they were right in their complaint? And again, I want you to be very honest with your answer there. Be honest with yourself. Do you agree with them in the complaint that they are making to the landowner? I believe that from a worldly perspective, many of us would agree with them. Many of us would sympathize. Many of us would understand their complaint. But again, the parable is a focus on the kingdom of God. So we must consider these things from a spiritual perspective rather than a worldly mindset. As we continue on here into the 13th verse, so the landowner, he responded to the frustrated ones by saying to them that he was doing them no wrong. Get that, he said that he was doing them no wrong as they had agreed to receiving that one denarius. Now, was the landowner trying to get over on them? Again, from a worldly perspective, I think many of us would say, hey, he's just trying to get over on them. He's trying to get over on us. Again, if we were in their shoes. But again, this parable, again, we must think of from a spiritual mindset. We must not think of it from a worldly mindset. The landowner then tells them there in the 14th and in the 15th verse, he tells them to take what is theirs and to go as he desired to give those that were last. He desired to give them the same that he had given to them. He even asked them there, we'll see, is it not lawful for him to do what he wished with his own things? Was evil, he said, was evil in their eyes 
because he did good. The landowner was saying that he did a good thing. Do you realize that the kingdom of God that is for all, whether they receive his invite and accept his invite early in the morning or at the final hour, do you understand that all who accept God's invite, all who follow him in sincere and in honest and in genuine and in true faith, do you understand that all of us, we will receive the same reward. All of us are going to go to the same heaven. There is no special heaven for all those who believed in the Lord when they were five and eight years old compared to all those who may have began to believe when they were in their 60s, their 70s, or in their 80s. All of us, we are going to receive the same reward. Again, we cannot approach heaven. We cannot think of the kingdom of God with a worldly mindset. We have to think of it with a spiritual mindset. We have to think of it with the spirit that the Lord has put inside of us. All that we have learned, we must again understand it. We must receive it through the Holy Spirit. We cannot understand, we cannot understand the kingdom of God with a worldly mindset. It will never work for us. We have to approach the kingdom of heaven with the spiritual mindset. In our lesson, it essentially ends on that note with Jesus saying, so the last will be first and the first last for many are called, but few are chosen. On that note, we must understand that many have been called, but only a few have accepted the invite from the Lord. Again, the Lord, he has gone into the marketplace, right? And he has looked for hired laborers, those who have come, those who have followed him and going to his vineyard. Only a few today have accepted the invite from the Lord. God, he again has been calling out to the world. He has been going into the marketplace, which is again representative of this world. And he has called out for many, many, many to come and follow him. But only a few have chosen to go into his vineyard. Some will turn around and they'll look and they'll say, oh, it looks better to work over there. Let me go and work over in that field. That field looks a lot better to work in. Others, they'll turn and they'll find another field and say, hey, it's better for me to go over into that field and to work in that field. I don't want to work for that landowner. I don't want to work for the Lord. That's what many have said today. Many choose to go about living in their own manner rather than, again, living according to the way of God. All of us who have accepted the invite from the Lord, as you have heard me preach about a lot this year, we will go on to inherit the heavenly kingdom. We will inherit that vineyard. And again, great is the reward for all of those who follow the Lord. Great is the reward for all of those who accept his invite. So I encourage you today. I implore you today. Accept the invite from the Lord. When God is going into the marketplace, you follow him. Go and follow him. And he has a great reward for all of you, all of us who choose to follow him. And that reward again is his heavenly kingdom. So again, Accept that invite today if you have not done so already, and you will rejoice in the reward of the Lord.